Hey, hey, you know how they say if you ever get locked up to uh to go up to the biggest motherfucker you could find and just bust them in their shit, <laughs> just ring that goddamn bell, huh? I'm gonna tell you something, man. That's don't do that. <laughs> That's probably not a good idea. Um, let me explain why. Well, my experience. All right, so this will happen. I'm in the county. I've already been sentenced. Like uh, I was waiting to uh, get transferred to a DOC facility. So I've been in the regional for probably almost 18 months at that point. So I knew everybody in the little pod I was in. I was cool with everybody, man. We got along pretty well for for the most part. You know what I mean? Except for Friday, Friday night fights. That shit was lit. Everybody fighting. It don't make a fuck. You didn't want to fight? You fucking hit the box. <laughs> Check the fuck out. But anyway... Uh, I wake up one morning, and I'm waiting on trays, it's, you know what I'm saying? So I went over to the table, and I grabbed a remote, and it's like four dudes in the table beside me playing poker. And they all, you know, involved in what they doing and shit. They not paying attention to what the fuck I'm doing. So I, I grabbed a remote, and I turned it up on a, on Days of Our Lives, because it had this little big booty bitch that I had a crush on. And we had three channels back in the day, so that was the only thing we really had to watch besides. It was either that or a goddamn Price is Right. Waiting on them fucking lunch trays. You already know what I'm talking about. Uh, that's how we knew what time it was. When the clock was fucking broke, we just turned the TV on and see what the fucking show it was. And then we knew what time the fucking trays was going to be there. Real talk. Uh, y'all spoiled now. Y'all got 567 channels in goddamn jail. Huh? We had it bad. Plus, we had the box TV that was bolted to the fucking TV stand. Y'all got flat screens and all this bullshit. Uh, probably got virtual reality. Y'all got kiosks. You know what the fuck? What, what the fuck? Man, when I did my prison time, I ain't never in my life thought somebody would be fighting over a kiosk. I didn't even know what a kiosk was until like three years ago. Uh, I'm way off topic. So anyway, <laughs> I had the remote and I'm changing the channel and shit. Uh, you know, I'm sitting there watching it. And there's this big ass dude over there named Peoples. Well, Peoples was cool at first, but he thought he was the pod father. Huh? He thought he ran that shit because he was he was b about the size of some people's though. He was actually fucking six ten, fucking three hundred some pounds. It was just a big old corn fed fucking ox from goddamn somewhere in southern West Virginia. I don't know where the fuck he was from. I think he was from like Lingo, Mingo, <laughs> bloody Mingo. No, nah, he was from McDowell. I remember now. He was from McDowell County. All right, but anyway, so. <laughs> He, he looks over at me, he's like, hey, man. He was like, I was watching that. I was like, bro, <laughs> you're playing cards. I was like, come on, man. You can't you can't run the poker game and the TV at the same time. And he was like, uh, he hopped up, right? <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> because like I said, it's not always a good idea to start some shit with the biggest dude in there. And it's not because he's big. Don't be scared. Don't ever be scared of somebody because they're bigger than you. Because I'm going to tell you right now, that don't have nothing to do. Anything can happen in a fight. And in this case, damn near anything did. But here's what happened. So he hops up and the fucking instantly the tension in the fucking pod changed. The whole energy changed. Huh? The vibe just switched the fuck up quick. And that look, and then people were starting to come out they cell, because like I said, it was about child time. So they all like, oh shit, B and motherfucking people's about to do. They about to rock. Everybody can start coming out and shit. All right. So I look up, I see my boy Coleman and shit. That's the only dude in the pod that I was really tight with. And he gave me the head nod, like, okay. So I know I got one motherfucker that got my back. Because at first, when shit first jumps off, you got to kind of fill it out. You got to read the room in there. Because if you don't, <laughs> you're done for it, for real. So I seen I had some backup, and I was like, all right, fuck it. So I throw my set up, and I'm like, god damn, how, what the fuck am I going to do with this big old motherfucker? So I said, fuck it. I ran, <laughs> and I jumped off the stool, and I slipped, because I was I, ain't no way I could hit him in the fucking head from where I was standing. I'm six foot tall, and this motherfucker huge. So I jump up off the stool like I'm about to just Superman him in the shit, right? <laughs> well, my foot slipped off the stool, and I lost my whole fucking, <laughs> my equilibrium in midair just changed, and I fucking missed. With everything I had and belly flopped and hit the fucking ground. Boom. 
And I look up and fucking my boy Coleman came up and started hooking off on him. And I was like, fuck it. And I was out of breath. That shit knocked the wind out of me. So I pushed myself back up. We over there, the whole pod ba- beating the shit out this motherfucker, man. Usually I ain't down to jump somebody, but this dude was a fucking asshole and deserved it. But anyway, man, I thought y'all would find that shit funny, man. Because your boy about that, I, hey, I set it off, though. I swear to God, huh? Ain't nobody in that bitch had the heart to fucking do it. I tried. <laughs> I ain't get the first one in, huh? But I got the last one in, motherfucker.